Hello and welcome, this is Eagle Eye 621 and what you see behind me is Zero Ticking Kelp. Sorry I was away for a couple of weeks, but I am back with the snapshots and as you can see, we are in 20W06A. That is the first snapshot for the 1.16 Java edition. And I am here to happily tell you that I've been answering a question wrong for a while. That is, can you zero tick kelp? Can you shaky sand kelp? And the answer used to be no, but as of 1.16, at least for this first snapshot, the answer is yes. I'm going to show you two ways how to do this, and I'll start you out with some numbers. This method right here will generate approximately 2,850 kelp per hour. Now, as I said, you're wondering if you can shaky sand kelp, and the answer is yes. Turn this on right here. And you can see everything turns on very nicely. We have shaking sand, fast growing kelp, and a nice clock right here to harvest it. Now, this is slightly slower on a per crop basis, coming in at about 2,600 kelp per hour. Uh, however, as you can make this one wide tileable, you can obviously grow significantly more in the same area, much more faster and much more compactly if you really want to go crazy on the amount of kelp you need. Now this shaky sand version will be in a separate video, either next or the one after. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this small module version of the zero ticking kelp. And the materials that you need to do that are in this chest right here. These two sticky pistons do have to be sticky pistons. And then these five regular pistons, you can get away with three. I will show you and explain as we go along. Also, this glass and this additional glass don't have to be. They can be any full block you want there to contain the water. Uh, but you do need a solid block, a full solid block, in order to transmit some redstone signals. And you will need six of those. Now I have a copy of these same materials right here. So we can get started. As I said, I'm going to show you two ways to do this. And first, let's get off the ground. Let's break this. And we're going to make a T-shape. Now the direction of your T is going to be the direction that this faces. So we want this both facing the same way. Then we're going to make this little T-shape right here. Break this middle block and go up and over on both sides. So up and over. On this one sticking out right here, we're going to put a redstone torch on either side. And then we're going to put our sticky pistons against this block facing inward on both sides we can grab our lever and we're going to want to put the lever on the inside just like this and turn it on that will depower both of these torches now we can put our sand on top of this this doesn't have to be sand kelp grows on a lot of different blocks but if you want to make this easily reusable to zero tick other crops Sand is going to be a good bet as it works with all of the other ones. Now we're going to put our two dots of redstone just like this on either side. And we're going to put our pistons firing both above and below both of these sticky pistons. Just like that. And then we can see if this works. If I turn this on, and you can see the sand is indeed being zero ticked. Now we did say you only needed three pistons. As you can see, two of the pistons are not firing. That means you can break those and the machine will continue to work. If these were both firing at the same side, this one and this one, you can choose either one and break and it will still work. This is somewhat locational though, so you do want to start with all four in order to make sure it works and then remove the ones you don't need. Now we're going to come around to the back side right here and we're going to place an observer staring over this middle sand. And then we want to add a solid block right behind that. 
and put our third piece of redstone dust on top. And this is how our harvesting system is going to work. So we need to put one more of our pistons right on top just like that. Now we want to be able to maintain the water. So you're going to want to come out an extra one. You don't have to, but it will work a little bit smoother for the water flow. Then just put a temporary block right there so you can put your chest in underneath. Break that and put our hopper facing directly into that chest. It's going to be your storage. Obviously, you can expand that if you're going for a longer AFK session. And then we're going to want to start putting some blocks starting one above this piston right here. And we're going to want to completely surround this and come out like this and come out like this and then block off for the water. Now we can put our water bucket on this block right here, the one right above the piston, just like that. Now you will see the piston continually activate. That's okay. It will stop doing that once we add our kelp block to the sand underneath. And you can see just like that. And you can also now put your roof on it. And this is to make sure the kelp doesn't go flying away. And already we have our zero ticking kelp machine, just like this. And as I said, this will get you about 2,850 kelp per hour. And we did say there were two ways to do this. The other one is slightly more compact, but it is a different aesthetic. And this is only an aesthetic, doesn't change the race at all. If you like the water directly like this in a straight line, this is how you go. If you want it to be a little bit more compact, we can bring the water in from the side. So let's get some of these materials back and ready. So we're going to come up again, a little bit off the ground. Again, we're going to make our T shape and it's whatever way you want it to face. You want the little dot to come out just like this. So we're going to face these in the same direction. We're going to go up and over and up and over. And this will be very similar until we get to the water retention part. So we're putting our redstone torches on either side, putting our lever. We're going to turn that on just to deactivate those torches. We have our sticky pistons coming in. And then we have our regular pistons firing above and below both of them. And now we're going to add our sand and we can test this and it didn't work because we forgot to put our dust on and now it'll work and you can see this one also the top two are firing so you can remove those bottom two and it will continue to work again we want our observer facing over the center block just like this and we're going to need to put our solid block coming out behind it with the third redstone dust on top and then the piston firing over and this is where things start to change now we can put our chest directly connecting to this block and put the hopper directly on top of that now the water is going to come in from the side so we'll get our glass back out and we're going to want to be able to come up like this and like this and like this because our water block is going to come from one above and to the side of our middle sand block you can do either side it doesn't matter but you do want to then surround that with glass and then you're going to of course want to surround the rest of this with glass so that we're going to funnel the water and the kelp into our hopper so you can see that is where our water is going to go it's going to flow to the side down and then into the hopper so let's add that water now you will see the piston will start to continually fire again that will change when we put our kelp down like this and what's happening here 
is the observer is reading the age of the kelp. You can see that right here. And when you, when the kelp grows, that age will change. And when that age changes, the observer will read that, it will break the kelp, and it will reset. Now you need some water to grow, so I can show you in this one. We have the age of five, then when you plant it, the kelp has a new age, and again, and again. And it's this age change that is causing the piston to fire, because that's what the observer is reading and that's what's making your redstone output. Now on this one you're also going to want to add your roof just like this in order to keep the kelp contained and if you've done everything correctly then we should have some zero ticking kelp just like this. Now I do have to give a shout out to Il Mango who made a very similar design to this. He changes how you set up these redstone torches but it's the same concept, and as far as I'm aware, he was the first person to realize and publish that in the 1.16 snapshot, you can now actually zero tick kelp. And of course, the original zero ticking module, just like this, I believe is one of his designs. If not, I apologize to whoever made it, and I will update the pinned comment. Now, as I said, this does work on the shaky sand, so you can set up a mass production of this. And I'll give you just a look right now, if you are eager and don't want to wait for my next tutorial, how this works. It's a very similar setup to the bamboo, in terms of how the redstone works and the shaky sand component of it. And then you just need to change up your clock timings a little bit to look like this. This is on 10 ticks. It's very close to 9 in terms of the most effective, but 10 does just edge it out just a little bit. And you're going to want to put the water on this block right here so that it will flow down and push it over. You can't add the observers in the back because there's not enough room. It'll interfere with the rest of the zero ticking machine. So this is why you need this clock. That's why this is also slightly slower on a per crop basis of 2600 per hour to 2850 per hour on the other modules. But clearly something like this will let you go a lot bigger, a lot faster. If you found this video helpful, I would appreciate a like. If you found it interesting, maybe one of your friends will as well. You can share it if you don't mind. And for more videos like this, especially the tutorial to that shaky sand version, do be sure to subscribe. Thanks for stopping by.